So it already starts in the morning by just uh, coming out of the metro and then being in this amazing uh, part of Paris where you have streets named after scientists, the beauty of it, um, and then entering the lab uh, and then meeting people and knowing that every day could be a, a day where there is a new, a new idea, a new project that starts, or the fact that we are a very open lab, there's always people coming in and we are very close to other universities, so there's always lots of things going on and, and you never know beforehand what's, what's going to happen. What I really enjoy about working in this lab is that you have people coming from all kinds of disciplines. So I come from linguistics, but I've worked with uh, roboticists, with computer scientists, with physicists, and it all often just starts at the coffee machine. We, we come to the coffee machine, we have a nice sofa there, and then we start and in a matter of a couple of minutes, we, we might have decided where we're going to do a new project. And because you have experts coming from all these different uh, fields with their different perspectives, you, you get something out of it that you would never get by just working in a, in a department where you have all people coming from the same background. At CS at Paris, we explore four different avenues, okay? still interlinked and overlapping, but four different avenues. So one is concerned with music, so the creation of artificial music and understanding what is behind music. Another one is about language, the emergence of communication systems. Another one is concerned with sustainability, which in this specific case means how we can revolutionize agriculture with new technologies. And the fourth one is about creativity, how we can investigate how people explore new ideas and find new solutions. The creativity team is devoted to explore how people on their turn explore what we call the adjacent possible. The adjacent possible is a set of all things, could be molecules, could be ideas, could be technologies, that are just one step away from what actually exists. And somehow you can reach it, I mean, by a recombination of the existing material. So this is a very powerful idea I had years back by Stuart Kaufman, a biologist originally at Santa Fe Institute. It's very interesting this idea because it gives you I mean, the framework to construct a mathematical theory about how people experience the new. One interpretation of creativity would be to first, to be able to deviate from a norm. Uh, so one interpretation of creativity would be first understand what is the norm, understand what is normal, what is uh, without creativity, and then add your own creativity. In terms of audio processing, it means two things. It means uh, defining the norm and being able to uh, conform audio content to a norm, and then being able to manipulate it from the norm to something which you, you, you deem as creative, you judge to be as creative. Well, one of the consequences of, of looking at language not as, as some ideal abstract system spoken by an ideal speaker listener, but looking at how language is distributed among a population and how it evolves over time every time you speak. But then you enter into the field of complex adaptive systems. And so all of the methods and all of the uh, uh, ways of experimenting from complex adaptive systems become relevant for language as well, which is when we get into touch with all the uh, statistical physicists at Sony CSL or with, with uh, with my colleagues who are into computer science and, and we get this interdisciplinary uh, collaboration going on. I work in the sustainability team. Uh, the team was created about 10 years ago to look into issues on sustainability, which is a large topic, and then how technology can be used to increase sustainability. In a lot of organic farming, there are a lot of techniques that are being used but I think it would be interesting to have more deeper understanding of why certain techniques work well or um, in what conditions they work well and how you can improve both the, the health of the, of the farm. For example, uh, the, how um, the biodiversity of the soil, for example, how can you improve that? And at the same time, uh, produce more on the farm. CSL was created like 30 years ago, 31 years ago. Uh, and 
on their website, on their Japanese web website, they, they advertise literally the fact that they welcome, uh, as, they, as they say, uh, oddballs, meaning people who don't really fit anywhere else. Uh, and so they can provide people with creativity uh, the means to do some, uh, and I quote uh, uh, Robert Kitano san, uh, extreme, uh, to, to, do some ex to have some extreme ideas and to implement them. Um, it, it provides a lot of freedom because we are supposed to have freedom. Uh, we are supposed to do some things which are different. The open-ended way of working that we have here, you, you could compare it a bit to how, how artists work. We, we have really the freedom to look at uh, what seems an important topic to work on and then uh, find a way to represent that topic, what is the best way to work on it, and how do you want to communicate about it. And, and that is very much possible within Sony CSL. So it's a very special place because uh, it was conceived to be a special place, a special place within a corporation like Sony. So the idea of the founders at that time, Professor Doi and Professor Tokoro, was to create an environment in which the researchers could be free to explore their ideas and their intuition sort of independently of the needs of the corporation. And the bright idea was to think that if you let researchers free to explore, then sooner or later something very good, some breakthrough will emerge. <laughs>